of um, of companies, our business names, our partnerships, our documents, uh, our debentures, our chattels, uh, among others. Then the component of uh, insolvency and receivership, because the Registrar General's Office is also the uh, official receiver of our, our government, and we uh, regulate matters that relate to liquidation of companies or companies that are failing or companies that we need to rescue the bankruptcy matters, the corporate insolvency, our receivership and winding up. The other product that we offer to uh, the citizens and friends of Uganda is uh, the civil registration, uh, which involves uh, the registration of civil marriages, uh, uh, special issuance of special licenses, uh, to conduct uh, marriages or marriage uh, uh, ceremonies in a place, a uh, public place like hotels. When you see weddings taking place in hotels or any public place, you know that uh, they have been licensed by our office, by government through our office. And uh, we also license uh, places of worship. Uh, you cannot uh, conduct a, a marriage without uh, authorization or a license from the state, whoever has had a marriage uh, ceremony in an unlicensed place, just know that your marriage does not exist. Uh, we also register all marriages, all marriages in uh, faith-based organizations uh, uh, are required to be uh, registered with us uh, when you conduct a, mar a wedding or marriage in your places of worship, uh, you, you, your uh, church is uh, required to submit their returns with our office. Uh, for recordation, but also for issuance of uh, or certification. We also issue single status uh, uh, letters or marital status letters, and these uh, are required for those uh, uh, citizens that uh, intend to marry abroad and there's need for evidence uh, to show that you have never married before or you have been divorced or you're not in any subsistent marriage. And so our office uh, issues uh, such uh, certificates confirm that you are single, you have not married, or you are married and divorced, and therefore uh, you are not in any subsisting marriage. That is as far as civil registration is concerned. We also handle birth and death, but that uh, uh, mandate was given to NIRA in 2014, but people still think that we handle birth and death, but uh, we handed that uh, responsibility to NIRA and it handles it. Then we are also in charge of uh, the security interest in movable property uh, registry. This is a registry that was established in 2019, uh, but prior to this, there was a law of 1978, which was the Chateau's law, and uh, uh, but it was revised and reviewed and reformed along the way. And now we have the security interest in movable property law that allows uh, uh, business people, individuals, micro, small, and medium enterprises to uh, access affordable credit by pledging any movable property to access loans. Uh, as academicians, you can pledge your laptop, you can pledge your intellectual property as collateral if you have a book, if you have a song, if you have uh, jewelry, if you have plants, if you have crops, you don't have to have land. If you have cars, if you have chairs, all these can be used to support access to credit and this uh, enables uh, the young people that may not have uh, fixed property or the women that may not have uh, land titles to use whatever is movable but has value to access a finance. So this is as far as our mandate is concerned. It's a huge mandate for us uh, and uh, but specifically this morning I will concentrate on intellectual property. I had to display the services so that in future you can invite us again to talk about business registration, the insolvency or the business rescue mechanisms in the era of COVID. These are good even topics for research as uh, us as researchers and uh, as people in the academia. Um, uh, we have uh, areas of uh, research in, in as far as the marriage is concerned, marriages and their contribution to the national development, the registration of marriages, the databases. We have all this information and also how to use, uh, utilize movable property to access affordable credit. And these are very beautiful areas for research. So as researchers, let's take interest in looking at this as we produce knowledge products. Uh, we have been 
uh, working towards uh, ensuring that we have uh, uh, knowledge products from our offices. Uh, sometimes we are so constrained, but knowledge products are very key that we have research in these government institutions that uh, uh, indicate the uh, different variables in as far as statistics of registration is concerned, in as far as the need for registration, you correlate the uh, business performance with COVID, intellectual property with business, or even business and marriage registration and the impact of uh, the marriage register on this. And so we can play around the different uh, topics in, in, in as far as research is concerned. And URSB welcomes you to uh, take interest in studies and research in uh, the services that we offer. Uh, recently, we did uh, a research on, uh, on uh, the uh, use of, uh, of uh, uh, I mean, the women in innovation, uh, how many women uh, innovating and when you look at our databases we and and the uh, the women in business as well how many women are doing business who've been voted and and, and uh, categorized as a, a country that uh, is highly entrepreneurial and so uh but when uh that uh you know uh, that uh, uh is published what is on our register how many women on businesses, how many, I know in, uh, many businesses are run by women. So what is the, the correlation? How many women own intellectual uh, property? How many uh, women have access to credit, have access to credit in as far as the registry of uh, URSB is concerned? So are the gender dimensions or in, in, in as far as our, our, our registry is concerned, even the young people, how many young people are innovating? How many young people accessing finances? How many young people are registering? businesses how many young people are innovating i know there are so many young people in the innovation uh, landscape and scope uh, so but what shows what does the research say and as far as uganda is concerned where do you get all this research so i'm interesting us as researchers to go beyond and look at using the public uh, uh, uh service uh, uh provision the ministries departments and agencies to uh take out knowledge products we implement a number of laws, and these laws uh, range from the general laws and specific laws. We have the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda as amended, and it is uh, the supreme law of the land. It provides for ownership of property, which also the of property is indicated. We have the Uganda Registration Services Bureau law, uh, which uh, uh, set us, it's a 1998 law that uh, uh, set us in place, but uh, whereas it came into a uh, uh, a place in 1998. Uh, we were formed in 2010, 2019. That is when it was actualized. Uh, we have uh, the uh, business registration laws, which include companies, the Companies Act of 2012, and the Companies Act has implementing regulations, uh, which are, are the companies' general regulations, powers of the register regulation. Uh, uh, we have the single member reg reg regulations, and this guide on how, or uh, guide us on how to implement this law. Uh, uh, the, the, the law allows you, the company registration law allows single member companies, and these were not uh, uh, in place uh, before uh, 2012. The old law did not provide for this, and many changes and reforms have been made. Uh, so you can now register one man, one woman company, which was not the case. We also have partnership laws that uh, enable partnerships to be registered. We have business names, registration laws, and uh, the uh, uh, implementing regulations. We have implement the Finance Act, the Stamp Duty Act. We have the Documents Registrations Law. These documents, these are legal documents uh, which are signed by um, the parties and witnessed and any document that has been signed by the parties and witnessed is uh, eligible for uh, registration with Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Some of the examples of these documents are the uh, you, the contracts that you sign on a daily, the memorandum on that was, sorry, the MOUs, the memorandum of understandings, the, the land transactions that you make on a daily, they engage whatever is in writing, the agree, whatever agreement uh, that is in writing, as long as it is uh, uh, in accordance with the laws of Uganda and not against public order and morality, it is registrable. And we have all these agreements from 1900. Uh, 19, uh, uh, four or five. Um, we have uh, 
the security movable or interest in movable property law that I talked about, which enables you to access a credit or register your uh, chattel or movable property with Uganda Registration Services Bureau. If you want to use your car or your phone or your computer or your book, the book that we have written as collateral, it is a requirement that you register it first with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. And then uh, when you submit it for uh, as collateral in any financial institution, any commercial bank or microfinance, they'll be in position to access the data of your RSB to first find out whether it is registered by you in your names and whether it has any encumbrances, whether it has been used to access credit elsewhere. So we have this database that is very important and has uh, 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 several registrations that uh, 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 almost uh, 8,000 uh, registrations and the commonly used uh, polar, uh, charter is uh, the car, the vehicles, many people have put their cars uh, to uh, in the banks to get uh, access to finance. Uh, with regard to the marriage civil registrations, we have uh, the Marriage Act, the Marriage Act, we have the Marriage and Divorce of Mohammedans Act, we have the Hindu Marriage and Divorce Act, we have the Customary Marriage uh, Act, and uh, uh, we have different categories of marriages in Uganda that are recognized. We have the civil marriage that is uh, conducted by Uganda Registration Services Bureau and uh, the district uh, uh, marriages, uh, uh, the district uh, registrars and uh, cows and so on. We have uh, the church marriage, uh, which is conducted in your different churches. And these uh, are, are potentially, I mean, they are monogamous marriages, even the civil marriage, when you engage into a civil marriage or a church marriage, it's supposed to be one woman, one, 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 one man, uh, uh, one, one, uh, so no, no, no other. Then we have the customary marriage, which uh, is uh, done according to the customs of uh, our societies. And uh, these are potentially polygamous. Anyone who marries, under, uh, who marries under the customary law is free to marry as many women as possible. We have uh, the Hindu marriages, we have the Muslim marriages, uh, among others. So those are, we have about five categories of recognized marriages in Uganda. So within yourselves, you know the kind of marriage that you engage in. Um, uh, the insolvency, uh, like I mentioned, we regulate insolvency. Uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, we are in charge of uh, uh, the uh, receivership matters. And these are the laws that uh, enable us to uh, implement all, uh, those laws. So the subject of discussion and how I want us to limit ourselves to intellectual property because it's the subject matter now. Uh, intellectual property has several laws. We have the Trademarks Act, of 2010 that has regulations uh, under uh, it. We have uh, the uh, the trademarks, uh, the Trade Secrets Protection Act. We have the Industrial Property Act. We have the Geographic Indications Act. We have the Corporate and Neighboring Rights uh, uh, Act. And these have implementing regulations under them. We also have the National Intellectual Property Policy and other related policies, but also in execution of our mandate, we uh, align our services in accordance with the national development plans, uh, the uh, uh, strategic uh, development uh, uh, plan of uh, URSP as well, the Vision 2040, and uh, uh, the SDGs uh, among uh, others. So we don't work in isolation. But we also have, apart from the national laws that we have, we have regional and international commitments. And uh, we are members of the East African community. We are members of the World Intellectual Property Organization. We are members of the African Region Intellectual Property Organization. And we are members of uh, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and all these regional and international treaties, uh, protocols, and agreements do commit us as a country to comply and observe the provisions of those uh, respective uh, protocols, uh, treaties, uh, and agreements. And we are also signatories to specific uh, treaties that also affect the uh, 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 and have impact on the intellectual property and business landscape of our country. For example, we are members of the East African community, and we are we are obliged by the provisions of the East African Common Markets Protocol. We are. Uh, 
uh, members of the WTO and we are obliged by the trade related aspects of intellectual property agreement of 1994 that sets a minimum standard of uh, intellectual property. We are members of the, the World Intellectual Property Organization and we are signatories to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, uh, 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 which enables us to uh, register patents within all the member states of the World Intellectual Property Organization. We are also looking uh, up to um, joining, uh, signing uh, to the uh, protocol of the Madrid or entering the Madrid system. Uh, uh, and we are users, recognized users of the misclassification that enables us to classify the trademark applications in accordance to the classes, the, the goods and, 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 and services. We are members of the African Region Intellectual Property Organization. In fact, we are founding members and as such we're signatories to the Harare Protocol, the Banju, the Harare Protocol enables us to register patents, industrial designs and more. The Banju Protocol enables us to register uh, our trademarks within uh, the 20 member states of uh, repo. Uh, we have the Sokompon protocol, which uh, regulates the traditional knowledge and folklore. We are yet to uh, sign uh, this uh, protocol. We are also uh, a signatories to the uh, Marrakesh protocol, uh, Marrakesh treaty that uh, enables uh, us to uh, put exclusions uh, in as far as uh, access to uh, protected copyrightable uh, works uh, for visually impaired persons. So. Uh, for you in the academia, for us in the research, uh, the visually impaired persons are allowed to access uh, protected, protected uh, 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 works uh, or copyright works without uh, any uh, limitations. And we are trying to uh, domesticate uh, these provisions under our copyright law, though our copyright law is, ex is uh, comprehensive. Uh, I have a bee around me, so they are with me. It has seen honey. Um, uh, we have the Kampala Protocol. This is a, a new kid on the block. Uh, we signed it just a few uh, days ago here in Kampala, where we uh, gathered uh, 20 member states of uh, the African Region Intellectual Property Organizations, the heads of intellectual property offices, the ministers from all those states, and we took out a protocol that will enable the voluntary registration of copyright. So. Uh, this is where we stand in as far as uh, international and regional commitments are concerned. Uh, what is intellectual property uh, basically? How do we appreciate it? Uh, we need to uh, appreciate that intellectual property plays a critical role in the changing of our lives as individuals and communities. It touches every part of our society because it facilitates growth, productivity, and prosperity. All economies rely on this uh, uh, intellectual property uh, products, the phones that we have within our homes, the communication, the Zoom platforms, the mobility, the, the, the vehicles, the motor vehicles, the uh, telecommunication uh, provisions, the ICT, the health sector interventions, agricultural solutions and innovations are all there because of intellectual property. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, now tried that uh, uh, intellectual property rules the way we do business, because business, the way we run our business is the way we run our daily lives has changed because of uh, intellectual property solutions. And we rely, we rely a lot on intellectual property and as far as uh, our offices are concerned and as far as our research is concerned, because it's easy to make uh, research online than going to the physical library we have online libraries uh, where we can access that and all this is enabled through intellectual property means we appreciate that the fact that uh, intellectual property is a business tool and uh, it's also intangible property uh, that uh, many people tend to enjoy, especially businesses. They, when you ask the businesses about the properties that it owns, they'll just display the cars, the computers, the human resource, and all, but you never hear them talk about the intangible property, which are the intellectual property tools. A, a company or an institution that has a trademark, for example, a logo, a, a, a musical work, a documentation, knowledge products, the innovations, the systems, electronic systems, computer applications, all these are intangible assets that should be taken into consideration. The other day I was talking to an ED of an institution. He made a very good presentation on what they have done as an upcoming and emerging entity in as far as the manufacturing uh, is concerned. And at the end of the day, they did not mention the intellectual properties that they have. And in our register, 
this particular local company has 11 uh, trademarks registered, uh, two designs registered, one patent in waiting. I, I mean, and, and these are almost 15 intellectual property assets that add value to, to, to the, uh, to the uh, company. And they could not display them. And I had to challenge them. I said, no, you cannot talk about the vehicles that you have, the human resources that you have, the donations that you have, without talking about the intellectual property assets that you have. And this is the, uh, the, the information and, 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 and campaign we should make that uh, intellectual property should be appreciated by, by uh, the different manufacturing companies. And this is my, my, the area of my research actually in the academia. Um, we are, I already mentioned that we have roles under the TRIPS agreements and uh, we have all the national laws as well that enable us to uh, uh, create intellectual property to think and uh, protect and explore and market and as far as uh, the value addition is concerned and the value proposition. Uh, we appreciate the fact that we have creative ideas everywhere. Even within our homes, our children come up with different creative ideas. Ourselves, you wake up in the night, you have this idea. And it is important that when you get this idea, write it immediately, because when you wake up in the morning, you'll have forgotten all these expressions of, of human mind, the ingenuity, uh, uh, intellectual property. Uh, I, I always tell people that the first um, gift that we have is our intellectual property, that first intellectual property that everybody has before we even talk about the physical property is intellectual property. It is because of the intellectual capital, the human ingenuity, that most of these works are created. But it's one thing to create intellectual property. It is always advisable that you protect it. You go ahead and protect it. Many people create intellectual property, get excited, take it to the marketplace. Before you know it, it is, uh, it is there's a uh, uh, piracy, there's a uh, counterfeiting, there's all uh, unauthorized use. Uh, and uh, yet intellectual property gives you exclusive rights and the monopolistic rights. Uh, maybe just to simplify, intellectual property refers to the creation of minds such as inventions, literary, artistic, and scientific works, design symbols, names, images, to mention but a few. You can see the image. This is a, an image taken from uh, the online uh, free uh, to share uh, facility. Uh, and you can see the brain. It's just the brain. You just need your head to create intellectual property. You just need your head, your pen, and, and, and paper. And you start writing and creating and thinking of solutions, and then you can, that is intellectual property generation. And I will discuss the steps and the value chain of intellectual property. Uh, we need also to appreciate some of the types of intellectual property. We have patents that protect new uh, uh, and non-obvious industrially applicable inventions. It means that they are new. They must not have been done anywhere in the world. In the world, that is the test or patentability. And these apply in all industries, the chemicals, the drugs, the plastics, turbines, electronics, scientific equipment, communication, to mention in all fields or all industry, as long as something is new and is uh, not obvious to the person that is uh, 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 qualified uh, in that uh, field, if it is an engineer, it shouldn't be obvious that any engineer can come up with this. There must have been some level of inventive step and it must be industrially applicable or relevant. It must be used uh, by uh, any member of the public that can access it. We have trademarks that protect designs. I mean, uh, symbols, signs, uh, are symbols of identity that distinguish one entity from one, uh, the products of one entity from another. And it applies to all industry. Some of the examples are, for example, I'm using an HP laptop. Then the, the iPhone, the, the, the Apple, we, we the, 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 the cars that we use, the Toyota, the, the, the a type of machinery that we use in our kitchen, in the TVs that we use, uh, maybe Panasonic, all these are brands. The water that we drink, Renzori, CP, Wava, all these are symbols of trade. The shape, the, the, the service marks, Serena, Sheraton, Shell, Total, all these are trade and service marks. Uh, we have industry designs that protect the appearance of uh, any product, the ornamental designs, uh, uh, let's say the shape of a product, the packaging material, uh, the shape of a car, for example, all these designs are protected under the law. Even fashion, 
a fashion is protected. You come up with uh, some new fashion, it is protected under the laws of Uganda. I must say that Ugandan laws are so comprehensive and so updated, but they have not been utilized by the members of the public. Then we have copyright that protects uh, original works of authorship in the area of uh, scientific, uh, artistic, uh, and, and, uh, and literary works, uh, uh, like publications, videos, photography, broadcasting, all this is protected under the copyright and computer applications, as long as they don't have the hardware components and they have only the software components. The neighboring rights also protect original works of authorship is uh, specifically relating to performing rights or producers of uh, phonograms and uh, uh, broadcasting uh, organizations. We have trade secrets that protect secret business information. I told you about the Trade Secrets Act of 2009, which applies in all industry. If you do not want to disclose any information that has a commercial value, it is okay, it is protected by the Trade Secrets Protection Law. And some of the uh, global examples are the Coca-Cola formula. Nobody knows it, but Coca-Cola has been here for over 100 years. And uh, it, is, it has survived and thrived on its formula. It kept it as a secret. We have the food recipes. Uh, locally, I always use the example of Uhuru rice. It is a trade secret. Everybody goes for Uhuru rice, but they don't know the formula. And that formula is only known by the family and it has not been disclosed. But we also, we have our databases. Let's say the database of banks, where we have so many banks. And if any of the employee, employee, employees shares information that has commercial value in any banks who are competing bank, then that is uh, uh, not uh, uh, acceptable. Uh, we have the telecommunication companies, Airtel, UTL, MTN. Also, if you, these are in two competition and their database is a trade secret. So if any of your, uh, the worker shares information with a competing agency or, or a entity, then they are violating. But we also have trade, uh, um, I mean, traditional knowledge. We have geographical indications, uh, like I'll, I'll discuss along the way. It is important that when we talk about intellectual property, we also appreciate the value chain because everybody has a role to play in as far as intellectual property is concerned. Um, we have the intellectual property generation stage, which involves the inventors, uh, the research, the investment, the prototyping, the testing, the intubation, the funding, this is the, like the first phase. You are thinking about what to do. This is an example of uh, maybe you're coming up with a solution, a product that is going uh, to uh, clear the air. Uh, let's say a freshener that uh, you can use to uh, in place of uh, the sanitizer. And so you are testing it, you're researching, you're looking at the chemical components, the uh, uh, all the there is and you're looking for investors if you don't have money you're testing you uh, if you join people with the collaborations and if you know that somebody has done this before maybe your partnerships all this is a generation if it's a musician they're in the studio uh writing the lyrics trying out the different beats in the uh production they are testing they are testing the voices and playing all the kind of rhythms and trying them this is still intellectual property generation if it is writing a book, you are thinking, editing, writing, uh, getting people to review the. So this is also generation. So, in depending on any category of intellectual property, it has a component of generation because there's nothing that comes out of the blue that I have this and I'm going to protect. If it is a logo or a trademark, by the time you come out with Serena, Shell, Sheraton, you will have thought about whether it is a coin word, how do we do it, do I get my name and coin it with this one, do I get a, a generic name Do I uh, that I can coin and uh, make separate, do I? so there's a process of thinking and creation, and that is why us as intellectual property practitioners, we, we promote the respect of intellectual property, there's a lot of investment, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of thinking that is put in this, in this, um, a process of generation of intellectual property. Then the next stage is once you've come up with a product, a song, a logo, a, a, a process, a product, a, 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 a whatever intellectual property, then 
here you need to protect it. You need to protect it for purposes of getting the a certificate of registration that will enable you to uh, make transactions as far as licensing is concerned. And so uh, this is where Uganda Registration Services Bureau comes into play because we offer the protection. We are the National Intellectual Property Office. We are the implementers of uh, the, the coordinators of the National Intellectual Property Policy. We are the National Intellectual Property Copyright Information, uh, the National Copyright Information uh, Center. So we are the only registry in Uganda that protects and gives you the registration of intellectual property. So once we give you that protection, you can go to the market, you can do all the intellectual property promotion, you can uh, uh, get finances, you can put it in the marketplace for commercialization purposes. Of course, you have to appreciate who you, what your market is, the size of your market. And now we go in the seven piece of marketing, the pricing, the profit, the place, to mention but a few, and the distribution channels. Then the exploitation and utilization of intellectual property is also key. And this is where we need the licensing components, the transfer of technology, uh, um, among other components. Um, then when, and this is in your hand, uh, because you as an inventor or a creator, intellectual property is, is a private right. Uh, many people uh, blame government, oh, and things are being infringed. Intellectual property is like when you have your own computer or your phone or your land title, if somebody trespasses or infringes or takes your property, the first step is to report to the government through Uganda police. So when there's any infringement on intellectual property, it is important that you report. And uh, as Uganda Registration Services Bureau, we have put the reporting mechanisms in place. We put the simplification of uh, access to our services uh, uh, in, in, in as far as intellectual property enforcement is concerned. We have an intellectual property police or enforcement unit that is manned by Uganda police within our office premises. And we've been with this uh, uh, unit uh, for the last five years. We have registered so many cases. We have prosecuted so many cases because we also have powers to prosecute. And these powers are given by the Directorate of Public Prosecution. We also have powers to investigate a crime. And we have saved so many companies from uh, 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 piracy, uh, we have so many pirated products, let's say, uh, issues with toner, cartridges, computers, phones, uh, drinks, uh, soft, uh, soft drinks, uh, and many others. And uh, when uh, some unscrupulous people in the public see that your brand is making a lot of uh, progress, they want to create a similar brand and they don't register it because we do not accept sim confusingly similar names. Let's give an example. If it is Kazire, for example, product, or Mukama Nayamba product, or Coca-Cola product, somebody wants to come with Coca-Cola, but that is similar. It cannot be acceptable within the laws. We take these names and process through examination. We have examiners, we examiners. If it is um, a, a, a bottle shape that is it that is similar and unique and has been protected and you want to register the same. I mean, you want to use the same, we cannot accept it. So what these infringers do, they just make their products, give them similar names like Kazire, they call it Kazara or something, something that is going to cause confusion in the marketplace. And they place it, they can't, don't register. They place it in the market to take the market share of the other genuine products. So it is always advisable that you report these infringements and we uh, take action. Uh, these are examples of some of the uh, products that are registered with us. Uh, for example, in Zori, we have Uhuru uh, juice uh, owned by a very own young uh, local uh, manufacturer, a young boy. He's doing so well, even as far as uh, training in food science and technology. We have the Jibu water that is popular. You see the bottle design. The, the Jibu, this Jibu has hit so many home states because it is affordable, it is accessible, and even the bottle design is simple that you just need to put a tap and that. We have Wava water, we have Coca-Cola, we have Bella wines, that these are products that are made by local people. Uh, we have Riham, we have Kazire, I'm using these local products, of course, apart from Coca-Cola. 
it is important to secure intellectual property rights because uh, there are so many benefits. Uh, we have the reward theory because uh, when somebody invests in any intellectual property in simulation of any product, they expect returns on investment. And that's why we protect the protective, the protection uh, uh, mechanism, uh, provide for the protection mechanism to enable somebody get a license, uh, a certificate to use their product. So if you want to use my product, if you want to benefit, if you want to, uh, uh, you need to get a license from me, you need to pay for it, unless I put it out there in the marketplace under the common uh, creative commons uh, uh, mechanism where I don't want to earn anything and uh, put it to the public, I've offered it to the public. Unless it is under the creative commons uh, uh, system, then you need this for need to get a reward. So by buying that product, you are they're getting their benefits because uh, uh, you have paid for it. And also recognition, we have rights of attribution under the copyright system. If you're going to refer to my book, in your research, in the research that we do, you know, we have to, to record the sources of data, the research, uh, the, the, the uh, bio, uh, 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 we need to uh, 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 put the names of the authors of these books and the references. Uh, this is part of attribution and it is uh, a copyright management uh, system that yes, you're using my work for research purposes, which is an exception, you're not infringing, but. I need rights of attribution, recognize me as an inventor as well. So uh, intellectual property um, also fuels progress. The, the human race uh, relies a lot on the uh, intellectual property. We have so many emerging technologies. We have uh, artificial intelligence. We have uh, blockchain technology. We have uh, the internet of things. We have all the things that have taken the space in as far as technology is concerned and cultural assets in as far as traditional knowledge, geographical indications are concerned. We have seen traditional medicine being upgraded and uplifted through this uh, period of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because of the good works of uh, the Professor Wall, who came up with uh, the COVIDx and many other uh, following suit, but this traditional medicine has been here for ages, and the traditional med uh, knowledge uh, provisions for protection have been here uh, for ages, and as far as intellectual property is concerned, and we are happy as the intellectual property office to see these conversations in the media, in in, in the different types of uh, forum for us like, like the way we're discussing here so intellectual property is critical you cannot do without it and that's why we encourage all universities all research and development institutions to have intellectual property policies within their institutions we want the uh uh the uh these uh, ministries departments and agencies to have intellectual property uh, policy but we also want universities and uh vocational schools or institutions to put in place uh, intellectual property policies, but also teach intellectual property at all levels and doesn't matter what subject or what course you are doing. A business, uh, a student of business needs to know intellectual property because intellectual property is used for business. A science student needs to know intellectual property because you're going to create medicines, create applications, computer applications, or, or any sort of scientific solutions that are going to support uh, and offer solutions to the world. A music student needs to know that there's copyright and, and intellectual property aspects within their uh, works. Any other student should know. The person who is skilling, the student who is doing vocational skilling needs to appreciate intellectual property. So it's no longer debatable. It is mandatory that every person must have knowledge on intellectual uh, property. And the beauty is that we have free courses online. We can provide links where you can do free courses, free courses that will not take you more than a month to do uh, an introduction, for example, to intellectual property provided by the World Intellectual Property Academy. We have also initiatives within the National Intellectual Property Office, the URSB, where we want to start training people in as far as intellectual property is concerned. We have offer internship uh, placements for young, uh, for students and university leavers or uh, uh, vocational school leavers. They should come and learn the practicalities, the practice, intellectual property practice, the operability, the, the law, the practice, the theory, and relate it. So we train 
and our, our, our offices are open. Uh, so intellectual property also spurs economic growth, creates jobs, the industries that are, when you see the industries that are mushrooming in Uganda, especially the local manufacturing industries, they're offering all these jobs, the opportunities that we have in Uganda, a country of 43 million people, a country that has many young people, the second large, youngest largest population, that has become a song that every time I present, I present that opportunity. We have to engage the young people in as far as innovation is concerned. These are not academics, these are practical situations. We have our great products, I've, I've shown you uh, the, the previous slide has the Movit products, the Mukwano products that we enjoy. Facebook has revolutionized the way we access information, the Twitter handles, the Apple, Coca-Cola, I already mentioned, Movit products. These are local products that are dominating our saloon or beauty industry in beauty schools, uh, hair uh, uh, making schools. Every saloon you go to, you find Movit products. These are made by a local person, a local manufacturer, and they have extended to the different parts of Africa. But the most interesting part is that Movit has registered most of the industrial designs, the bottle shapes, the bottle shapes that you see, they have registered so many of them. They could be one of the leading local companies in as far as registering of industrial designs is concerned. So we have to support our local markets. We have to support local innovation. We have to support our local products in line with the Bubu policy. We have copyright that protects artistic, scientific works. They are the works of creativity, like music compositions, movies. We enjoy movies every day. If you're using them for private purposes, it's okay. But if you're using them for commercial, the music being used for commercial purposes, you have to pay the people that create this works because if you do not pay them they will get discouraged they will not have the zeal to create more works because they have invested money and they are not getting a return and that is why we have collective management societies that bring together the uh, in different categories band of band of rights the musicians the performers the writers so that they earn from the collective efforts if you are a, music, a broadcasting company, you are a television, you are a radio station. Why should you play this music of an artist like Jose Chameleon, Baby Pool, Irene Intale, and you don't pay them back? And yet you're earning from this work. If you are a business person, a hotel, you're relying on these people's music. Why should you pay? Why shouldn't you pay to the collective management societies which they belong so that they get money to reinvest? The entertainment sector has underlooked. And, but it has been hit by the COVID-19 pandemic because the people, the users of these works are not paying them. And our musicians would be billionaires. Of course, some of them are billionaires, but they would be better if we were paying them. So as researchers, as people in the business and academia, it is important that we appreciate the sweat of these artists, the investment of these artists by paying for the works that we use, by paying for the, uh, cons uh, before we consume their works. We have some local writers like Dixon. Uh, I'm not sorry for my mistakes. This is one of the local authors. We have Katoto, a cartoon, very interesting and amazing. We have some of these, these are all examples of uh, works that are protected under corporate system. And when you have intellectual property or um, you, the, the, the right that you have is to prohibit others from using your work, or authorize others to use your work. You have the right to authorize people to reproduce your work, to uh, uh, public perform your work, to broadcast your work, uh, adaptation uh, uh, of your work, and uh, uh, many others. And all these intellectual property come with uh, the uh, protect, uh, term of uh, protection. Uh, uh, for example, for a trademark, it is uh, the first seven years of registration. Then when you renew after seven years, then every 10 years you renew indefinitely. So it's like an indefinite right as long as you renew. For copyright, it is 50 years uh, uh, or uh, after you, the death uh, of, so when, when you create the work, your life from the creation of that work, and then when you die, it is still protected 50 years. In some jurisdictions like US, it is protected even 100 years after your death. We've seen the, uh, 
the Michael Jacksons, all these musicians that have died, we're still enjoying their music and their families are still gaining a lot. But why don't we support our local musicians to benefit here in Uganda? A musician dies and we are also collecting mabuko and even school fees for their children. Yet they have this all intellectual property and we're enjoying the music, the entertainment industry. Then for trademarks, like I mentioned, protect unique signs like names, symbols, of our trade logos, scents, a scent like of a perfume. The sound also is protected as a trademark because it comes with uniqueness. For example, the sound of a Nokia phone, you can tell a Nokia phone, you can tell what a Samsung phone, uh, sound the, the iPhone as well. And this helps consumers to identify the source of their product. You get a product like HP, you know that this is an HP. There are people who say, I don't take any other water apart from this kind of water. I don't drive any other car apart from Toyota. I don't move, I don't uh, use any other telecommunication company uh, and, uh, uh, unless I use this. So the people are so attached to the brand and it doesn't matter who even the manufacturers are because they have built that brand. We have our local brands, the local uh, uh, Hello Food, we have Safe Border, uh, more, um, MTN Mobile Money and AHL Mobile Money. The mobile money, revolution. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what would have done without mobile money, especially during COVID. We can need with transactions. And now even banks with online banking, many banks have had to cut their branches, the physical branches, because there's more business in as far as online systems are concerned. So these are innovations that are supported under intellectual property. Uh, we have some of these examples, the local examples. Livara, owned by our own Max, 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 Maxima. Uh, this girl made all these products. This is lipstick done in Uganda. This is hair lotion. We have also Kentaro. Uh, we, I use all these products. Uh, unfortunately, when I get to the supermarket, or oh, I buy local products. Even coffee, I use local coffee. You not tell me about any products. I come to your office. If I don't find any local product or coffee or tea, I'll not take it. Because if you cannot consume our own, and these are organic, they're so organic, certified. These Kentaro products, very wonderful. Um, we have uh, Alio Aluesha. These are local uh, medicines and, and, and uh, uh, Vaseline and so on. And uh, our dear uh, ED uh, died recently, uh, Madame Aisha uh, Nakasuch. Uh, Madame Na 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 Aisha, forgetting her other name. I mean, her soul resin eternal piece. We have Livara. These are products made here in Uganda. So beautiful. This is Movit, Baby Junior. I've seen the adverts. This is Skin Guard, done by also, uh, I think, uh, Movit or something. We have also uh, uh, a skin doctor done by Dr. Sally, uh, Professor Sally. We have Movit. These are local products. We have them registered in our databases. We need, it all starts with us, that we have to support innovation and the owners of these works by using their works. We have the industry designs. Industry design protect the three-dimensional features or shape or surface of any uh, product. I already mentioned, of course, they have to be original and uh, they must, uh, uh, for example, the design, this tie and dye, this is a design. Uh, it can be a fashion of any dress. The design of a bag, the design, the shape of a bottle or packaging material, the people are attracted by the shape. When I see a unique shape, I buy a product because of the unique shape. The design, all these are protected under the law of uh, intellectual, or the respective laws of intellectual property. And some of these are furniture. The furniture to use, there's a lot of designs when you go to a furniture shop, you're spoiled for choice. But somebody sat down and created these designs the way this goes is secure. When you see how the description of these applications in the offices are so interesting, a device that has circular, rotational, what it's so amazing that when we're examining, the way they explain, at the end of the day, you find, oh, okay, they are defining or describing a table. But the, the language that they give it is so amazing that you find it so unique. All these products are, are designs. The car, the Jeep, the Range Rover, the Toyota, all these have different designs. All these elements of design, you can tell how uh, unique they are. Then patents protect, uh, like I mentioned, 
uh, new uh, uh, inventions. And some of these examples that I always use are uh, our local products. Uh, the, we have uh, uh, these vacuum sealed uh, bananas, matoke. These are done by our very own professor uh, who uh, uh, these, these, these vacuum sealed bananas are exported in several countries that they have a shelf life of now a year. They used to have a shelf life of, of six, months, six months, but I, I think now it's extended to a year. And when you keep for the women who are good at cooking here in this school, these matoke, when you keep them for all this long, as long as you uh, store them in that vacuum sealed uh, 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 manner, when you cook them even after how many months, they'll come out as if they are freshly peeled. And you know, for those who are good at cooking, who love cooking like myself, you can tell matoke that has stayed, when you peel it and keep it without uh, vacuum sealing it, it will still, it will not make nice mashed uh, matoke. It will be so hard. It will have different components. It will not have a good uh, product like this vacuum sealed uh, banana. So these are made by our own uh, professor Baziraki from Ch Chambogo. This safety pin was protected by the first inventor. Uh, and when you look at the language that is used in our database, a device that is used to hold something, you can think that it is unique, but it is describing a safety pin. Then the most common used product is a phone. Almost every household has a phone in Uganda. We have millions of phones, but these phones have products, patents. You can use them to download uh, apps, so many, what phones can do in our home, how, what phones have done. It is very important to appreciate that these are all products of intellectual property and they have several patents in them. And a phone also is uh, you to buy a phone. It is determined by, your decision is influenced by the product. Is it a Samsung? Is it a Nokia? Is it a Techno? Is it what? There are so many products of phones. And so these are also intellectual property elements because a name is an intellectual uh, property element. Sorry. So these are requirements for patentability. The, uh, the product or process must be novel. That means it must be new. It must not be uh, anticipated uh, by prior art. In other words, it must not be obvious to that person that is qualified in that field. It must be industrial applicable. In other words, it must be relevant and useful and have utility. Uh, uh, and uh, all this is protected under our national laws. Uh, uh, so we also need to appreciate the fact that we have utility models as a uh, category of intellectual property that protects uh, inventions and innovations. The difference between uh, patents and utility models is that the requirements are less, uh, are less stringent and uh, there's uh, some incremental or uh, newness in a product, but this product could have been in the market space for example, uh, an example that uh, we have on our registry is uh, this product. Uh, it is a shoe for sports. Uh, it is an invention that discloses several types of fasteners and uh, fastening elements. In particular, the invention discloses releasable pin with lock a locking cavity. So you see this, this product. Some even are electric. Uh, others are chargeable. Others are chargeable. But the concept of a sports show has been here for long. So it may not qualify to be a patent, but if it's an improvement or there's an incremental uh, 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 product or a process, it is protected as a utility model. Uh, the other example that I normally use is the phones. We have had the first phones were phones, you know, rotating, making all those sounds. But now we have then buttons. Now we have just swiping. I don't know what will happen, what would be the next innovation because innovation is moving so fast. Then we have trade secrets that I mentioned that protect uh, 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 information that uh, has a competitive advantage. And so it is expected to be prevented from public or competitors. And uh, this means that uh, when you disclose this information, uh, it uh, affects the business of the person. And some of these are business, business methods, uh, R&D information like us researchers, the formulas, I already mentioned the Coca-Cola formula, the rice, the ingredients, 
or, or the recipes, the manufacturing techniques, all these are protected under the uh, trade secrets. We also have processes. I mean, as we appreciate the different categories of intellectual property, how do you get them protected? The registration process is generally that you make an application. An application is received by uh, the URSB team. You make an application with URSB. We have examiners that examine the application as in form or substantiveness. Uh, then uh, there's the publication component where you publish to put out to the world that this application has been made. If you have an, an objection, please do so in 60 or 90 days, depending on the type of application. And uh, uh, the uh, publication is uh, either made in the Uganda Printing Publishing Corporation or the Uganda Registration Services Bureau Journal. And then if there's no objection within the period that has been provided by the statutory, uh, uh, the, the regulations, the statutes, then we issue a certificate. At every stage, there's a fee that is paid, an affordable fee that is paid for uh, uh, this uh, protection. Other uh, categories of intellectual property related to geographic indications, traditional knowledge, plant varieties, integrated circuits, and so on. Intellectual property is so wide and so broad. And when you have intellectual property, you as a holder, you decide on who may or may not exploit it. Uh, uh, you also can permit and license others to use it on a, mutually, on a mutually agreed terms. You can give licenses. Many people are surviving on this. You give a license for people to use their user licenses, their assignments. You can also transfer or sell uh, your intellectual property in a work uh, because it's your property. You can use it the way you want as long as the purpose you're using it is uh, not against public order and, and morality. Um, uh, we also have different routes of protection. We have the national route where you can protect under the national laws. We have the regional route where I mentioned the African Region Intellectual Property Protocols and Agreements. Then we have the international route where you protect through the World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, of course, as we do this, as we seek protection, and as we pursue intellectual property, we need to appreciate that we need to comply with the laws. We need to comply with the laws, the regulations, the standards, the rules that govern the registration, the corporate governance principles, and all other requirements, including the SOPs. Um, when you register intellectual property, definitely there are so many benefits because intellectual property stimulates creativity and innovation. The, you are, there's uh, the competitive a strategy, you are able to compete through differentiating your products from that of another, and you keep improving even your product, make it better. It gives you a marketing strategy because imagine you are all in the business of water and you had no logo, that all product or, 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 or name that is distinguishes your product. So it's part of identity. Somebody will use HP, you say, I use HP, I use uh, uh, Panasonic, I use uh, uh, MacBook, so it's a marketing strategy. It's also a business strategy. It enhances branding, but above all, it confirms ownership because when you protect with Uganda Registration Services Bureau, we give you a certificate that confirms ownership. And ownership is very key in this day and age where there's a lot of piracy, where there's a lot of intellectual property theft, that people steal your intellectual property. And when it comes to litigation, you don't have even evidence of ownership. So it's important that you protect and get the ownership certificate. Uh, with intellectual property, other benefits are that you can use intellectual property now as collateral. So you will be assisted to access affordable credit. You will access markets within the country and beyond the competition that I mentioned, the branding of your name and the marketing, the client lo uh, the, uh, clientele uh, loyalty, uh, because there are people who are stuck on a product that if it is not this, I can't do it. If it's not what this what I can't take it. If it's not this hotel, I can't do my function. So that one comes as a result of uh, intellectual property. But above all, intellectual property is used to contribute to national development uh, beyond, of course, paying taxes, but uh, identity uh, and uh, many other uh, provisions. So I thank you very much. As Uganda Registration Services Bureau, we are at, Uga, at uh, the, George, uh, the Georgian House on plot five, uh, George Street. We are at the Uganda Investment Authority 
we are at uh, Posta Uganda, we are at uh, Nachivuo, uh, Chukuo uh, site, we are in Bale, we are in Mbara, we are in Gulu, we are in Arua, we are in Masaka, we are in 42 municipalities of this country, but above all, we are online. I thank you very much for listening to me and I'm ready to take any questions. Back to you, moderator. Um, thank you very, very, very much, our facilitator, Masi. That is quite enlightening and elaborate. Our colleagues on the call, you will agree with me that there was no better unpacking than what Masi just did. That was uh, too much justice you know, for, for the subjects of discussion this morning. And it really opens up our minds to what exactly IP is about. And I like the idea of uh, educating us about URSB. Most times we find that people don't even know what URSB is. That's if they at all know that it exists. So for you to take us through who you are as URSB, the functions you play, the laws, policies, the institutional arrangements that are in place to ensure that IPs are created, registered, and protected is something that we really, really uh, appreciate. And that's the very beginning points for us to start working very hard to ensure that the knowledge we create is not uh, stolen by the very unscrupulous people in our communities as well as beyond uh, uh, our jurisdiction. So it's about time that uh, we take a few questions, comments. Um, I'll start with what is in the chat. Masi, I don't know if you're able to see. We, there are quite a number of comments. Very, uh, useful comments here, appreciating the work of URSB and the presentation. Someone, Lawrence said, trips is one thing that he thinks needs revisiting. Um, another, Juliet, oh, is wondering how URSB and UNBS work uh, complement each other. She talks of uh, what UNBS does and uh, the rest of the trademarks that uh, uh, URSB protects. What is the point of convergence? How do they cooperate? Which one prevails in case of any contestation? Um, yes, those are some of the key comments I see so far. The other one is um, an observation by, this should be our coordinator guide, Dr. Ruzaza. There are lots of great insights. The foundation for Uganda's knowledge economy enterprise has been built indeed from your uh, extensive introduction. We see that we really have the infrastructure in terms of law and policy to get us running. Um, I'm still, Checking, then Goretti is uh, asking, may it be that a company registers many more rights by its making, uh, for example, color, sound, name, etc. If so, how can a company know the various rights they have to register? Um, I, Masi, I need your guidance. Do you want me to continue or you could first address those three, then we, pick it up from there. Let me first address uh, these uh, three. Yes, uh, the first one is uh, basically on the role of uh, URSB and uh, UNBS. Many people confuse Uganda Registration Services Bureau and uh, UNBS. Uh, and of course, when you look at the websites and the mandates, it is important that uh, people, Ugandans learn to also read go on these websites and read, first of all, what the mandates are and what these institutions do. Uh, secondly, uh, URSB does the registration services, offers registration services. And as far as intellectual property is concerned, we register all intellectual properties. So our work is to register the products and the processes 
that are brought to our attention, but after thorough examination and taking them through the whole criteria of and process of registration. UNBS is to certify, give the certification of the products in as far as the quality is concerned. If, uh, uh, the, if it's a, a, a product for usage, for example, electric product, it must fit, meet the uh, standards and must be certified. If it is a product for drinking or for skin, it must be taken through the scientific examination to uh, uh, give it the acceptability for use. And so that is mainly what UNBS does. But I want to encourage uh, uh, us, people who have gone to school, to try and, and read about uh, what the different uh, organizations uh, do on the websites and so on. Then for somebody mentioned about the TRIPS, Agreement, of course, uh, yes, the TRIPS agreement uh, does provide for the minimum requirements for every member state of the WTO and as far as intellectual property is concerned. And I must say that uh, Uganda is one of uh, the uh, few countries that has complied with the TRIPS and as far as uh, reforming our laws and aligning ourselves to the minimum required standards. With regard to patentability and medicine, that's a whole other conversation I know this conversation of protection of, uh, 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 of medicines uh, uh, in, uh, in as far as uh, TRIPS is concerned and our industrial property law is concerned is uh, a matter that, uh, is, uh, that relates to the least developing countries that uh, whereas there are many uh, things that are not patentable and there's a list of uh, elements within actually the uh, industrial property law a specific rating to patents, what is not patentable. And one of the things are, are medicines, and this is attributed to the fact that uh, we signed agreements in 1994 as World Trade Organization member states, and the least developing countries were given some uh, 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 leverage uh, to uh, make sure that uh, they do not protect, allow protection of medicines in a view of the fact that uh, we are creating uh, an environment for uh, access to affordable medicines. Uh, the challenge of Africa then was uh, access to affordable medicine. These medicines are very expensive, especially these generic medicines that you see uh, that are being manufactured here and maybe in India and somewhere. If we didn't have these provisions and would not commit as countries, would be buying like a Panadol at 10,000. We buy a Panadol pack at like 1,000 or, or 2,000. So it would be very expensive, but uh, uh, that does not um, make us lose hope as, as, as uh, least developing countries because we have also the period of expiry and uh, this period will be expiring very soon. Uh, uh, but also we have other protection mechanisms. If it is traditional medicine, uh, the traditional medicine, the traditional, the copyright and neighboring rights law of Uganda does provide for some traditional folklore and some traditional elements, uh, but you can also protect uh, uh, your uh, medicine as a, as a brand name. So you protect a brand name like Covidex. I use Covidex because it has been in the papers and it's uh, public in the public domain. You can use the bottle shape of that product as an industrial design. You can protect it as an industrial design. Any artistic work can be protected our literary work can be protected under the copyright system. So we have different systems of protection of uh, uh, those elements. Then the other uh, question that I saw was, um, how do you tell that a company should register the different uh, aspects of intellectual property? It is very important, this is our role. And actually this is my, my research, my research uh, uh, in as far as uh, my PhD is concerned. Um, companies need to do intellectual property audits. Intellectual property audits can be done. We can enable you as an IP office when you write to us because it is very easy to tell that I have this manufacturing company. I am making bottle shapes, let's say. A bottle shape can be protected as industrial design if it is unique and it's new. I have a process that I have developed. It can either be protected as a patent I have a computer application that I have developed. It can be protected as a copyright. If it has some hardware elements, it can be protected as a patent. I have a logo that I use, the name of the company, like this logo of Nemra, uh, protected as, uh, as a trademark or a service mark. 
So we can advise as the National Intellectual Property Office, if you write to us that I have this company and I need to tell how to detect which intellectual property assets that I have. So a company can have as many intellectual property assets as possible. But many people limit themselves to just the name. When they register as a company name, they think they have arrived. A company name, yes, gives you that legal personality, but it does not give you the proprietary rights as you get under the trademark system. So it is important that when you register a, a company name, a company, and it is manufacturing products, take it beyond. So start protecting all the intellectual property assets if you are not, and you cannot break them down if you have not knowledge of intellectual property or you have not taken any course and this simplified course as intellectual property, but we also have materials, simplified materials that can enable you understand intellectual property. They're simplified materials that will make you appreciate intellectual property. Um, uh, a moderator Hadija, I would like also to give an opportunity to my team. I see a number of people from my office, my colleagues, and these are intellectual property experts. If you want intellectual property experts in Africa, you come to URSB. And uh, any of the members, Maria, Gilbert, K K K Kalibala, uh, Ajit, uh, please, uh, um, Skovia, you, you can tune in, just say a word or two and supplement what I've said uh, in, in this conversation. I would like to give you an opportunity that uh, when I'm not available to give these presentations, you are the people that are available to give this presentation. So please, you can unmute where possible if uh, the moderator allows just one or two members to supplement or give some uh, supplementary information in just a minute or two. Thank you. Um, that's very well. In please, uh, colleagues, uh, say a word or two, as suggested by our facilitator. Who goes first, Scovia? We have the director of intellectual property, Gilbert. Okay. I hope mm -hmm. this is Gil because he uses Agaba. Gilbert, are you on this call or it's a different Gilbert? If not, I'll ask Jit uh, uh, Yes, he's here. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, RG, for the excellent presentation. And I believe that uh, all our listeners uh, have something to go home with. Um, just a few things, I think. Uh, I will respond on um, the issues of uh, trips and maybe on the journal. So starting with the journal, yes, you are the journal which we use to publish uh, notices in respect of trademark applications. Our journal costs out 100,000 shillings and it's available as an option for everyone who is using uh, uh, who's seeking registration of their trademark. Uh, you can use the ERSP journal or you can use uh, the Gazette that is published by Uganda Printing and Publishing Corporation. Uh, then as for TRIPS, um, TRIPS is uh, the argument on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights. It is an agreement administered by the World Trade Organization. All members of the World Trade Organization, including Uganda, are required to protect intellectual property based on standards that are set out in the TRIPS agreement. However, there are exceptions provided in that agreement to allow for countries which are different levels of development to catch up in terms of use of intellectual property for their, uh, of course, for their development objectives. So these exceptions, are uh, ones that uh, uh, we have included in our law include, for example, in Uganda, we do not protect uh, patents on pharmaceutical products. The reason for that, as the Registrar General has highlighted, is that the cost of, uh, of uh, pharmaceutical product is usually determined by the patent uh, protection uh, over that product. And this will be very well known that currently we are unable to access vaccines because those who own patents on the, on the vaccines have refused to share 
that knowledge and they are using the patent system to maintain the monopoly over their events. Uh, so this TRIPS agreement allows uh, member states, which are called the least devolved countries, uh, which unfortunately Uganda is, they allow them not to protect patents on pharmaceutical products so that they may be able to access um, these uh, uh, pharmaceutical products to address their healthcare needs. Uh, we have used this, for example, in Uganda, we manufacture many HIV uh, drugs, antiretrovirus, uh, because of that exception that is provided in the TRIPS agreement. Uh, that said, I know most people would wish that this agreement be abolished, but unfortunately, that's not possible. Uh, what we have to do and what we are trying to do at URSB is how do we exploit those exceptions that are provided in the agreement to be able to support our development goals as a country. Uh, the rest of the issues, uh, my colleagues, I'll leave to my colleagues to, to address. Thank you, one second. Thank you so much, Gilbert, for, for bolstering those uh, key points and for more clarity. I see Kalibara's hand up. Please go on. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, good morning, everyone in attendance on this call. And uh, thank you, RIG, for that comprehensive presentation. Uh, during the presentation, RIG talked about our protocol that we have just uh, that we have uh, our ministers assigned uh, into existence. I think that is uh, one of the most exciting things for us as an office, for Uganda, but also for our regional partners in our repo and our global partners, uh, World Intellectual Property Organization and uh, AFRIPI. Now, uh, this protocol concerns uh, uh, copyright exclusively, and it concerns protection, uh, more protection, and more enforcement over these creative um, activities. As uh, RIG has defined for us, uh, copyright is anything that you create in the arts, which is opposed to maybe technology and uh, trademarks. What this protocol has provoked us to do and what we are going to do is to create a database, both at the national level and the regional level. The regional level has 20 member states and over 230 million people. So that's a huge market for our content, say in terms of music and film and books uh, for as a market. Now, what we, it provokes us to do here is that we also have to up our game and come up with a database. Previously, we've been approaching copyright from a technical point of view of non-formality. Non so when you create a book or when you make a song, you can stay with it and claim your own copyright and protect it in that way. But with the coming of the database, it almost uh, makes us accountable for everything, kind of make an inventory on what we have created in the arts. And we are saying that this, all this, all the creativity has to be in one storage system, which can be retrieved and also accessed by, uh, by invent, investors for economic benefit and improvement of this uh, creativity. So um, we have also told you of the procedures that when you create, when you come up with something, then you'll have to approach your RSP to advise you on the best system of protection and of course commercialization, but you also have the arm of enforcement. So it's important that we are emphatic on that. And we also ask Nemura to uh, be happy for Uganda and for us. I think this protocol is really going to take us a long way. Thank you so much. Um, maybe just to add that uh, Uganda has uh, always had uh, the voluntary registration system. In fact, we are ahead of Africa, or most uh, all African countries. And so by signing this protocol, uh, Uganda is uh, like the leader in as far as voluntary registration is concerned because we already have this in our Copyright and Neighboring Rights uh, Act of 2006. Back to you, Hadija. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Masi and your team. Very wonderful deliberations there. And uh, I'm personally excited about the Kampala Protocol. We are very good at setting the stage. Uh, and I think if we carry on with this uh, spirit, we are set for more innovation, you know, more research outputs, uh, because the, the protection comes in very handy to encourage innovation and creativity. 
Um, that said, we have a couple of other questions. I don't know, Masi, if you want to respond to them or you'll still nominate your colleagues there in the chat. Regarding um, most of them, some of them have been alluded to in the responses already, but there is one particular uh, comment or question from Mohamed Kibuka uh, about the process of acquiring an academic product protected. He says uh, the process seems to be longer and expensive, and this tends to put off many academicians from pursuing IPs. What can ERSB do to simplify, especially for academicians? Because we don't have a lot of money, says uh, Mohammed. That's uh, one of them. Okay. Then you see another one from Goretti. I'm not sure this wasn't answered already, but you can have a look at it. In which ways do URSB, UNBS, uh, support registered companies to flourish. I have a feeling that has been quite elaborated, but you can guide. Uh, then God from Wesley says some more clarification needed on the rights of IP holder. Um, he emphasizes the last points regarding how one loses IP rights to the public. And then finally for now, there's something from uh, Joya Simwe, how can we protect PhD and other research proposals, which is connected to what Mohammed is asking. And when you're done with that, then we can listen to Rue Ruta. I guess this is Dr. Rutash Rungavo, whose hand is up. Over to you, uh, uh, Masi. Thank you very much. I'll also give an opportunity to my colleagues. Ajit, are you in position to answer any question? Ajit Abraham. Okay, as uh, we get Ajit uh, uh, to uh, any question. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, Ajit, can you take on one of the questions? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mashi. Produce yourself and uh, what you do. My name is uh, Aget Abraham Onyait. I'm uh, the acting senior patent examiner at Uganda Registration Services Bureau. I'm going to try and tackle the question regarding the academic research. Uh, also, I think it has been posed twice. The one in respect to how the cost of protection for academic research, as well as protecting the PhD and other research proposals. <clears throat> so uh, first and foremost, I think the process seems long because many times in academic research, you find that you're attached to an institution and the institution has its own policies. For example, an institution's research policy might require you to first go through a process that includes disclosure of the IP to your institution, which is not normally faced by other people who, when they have their IP, they go straight to apply. So some of those processes are what make it seem like it's extra long compared to how it would be. In terms of the cost, the cost for the different IPs vary. But as far as I know, for a national, there is no single IP rate that costs more than 550,000 for the full process. For example, when you have copyright that vests in the publication of your research or in any other thing that is literary or artistic that comes out of your research, you will spend 50,000 as application fee as you deposit the work. And then you will pay a certain fee for publication that most times does not exceed 450,000 which totals to about 500,000. When it comes to the trademark, if you extract any, any marketing information, for example, in case you're able to build a brand out of your research, that will cost you a total of about 350,000 when you break it down. The 75,000 at application and such, then 100,000 if you're publishing with the URSB journal, then another 100,000 when you are at the point of registration, that's 275. If you choose to use another publication, it may cost a bit higher, but it still will not exceed 500,000. When it comes to the patent rights, if you're able to extract technical information from your publication or from your research that you want to protect using the patent system, it also will not exceed 500,000. In fact, the patent will cost a total of about 390,000 if you go through the full process. 
when it comes to the utility model, it will cost you about 80,000 for the full process. So it depends on which right you want to choose. If the fees are exorbitant for you on one thing, you can still prioritize one of the other rights because at the end of the day, we are trying to protect the commercial value of, your, of the knowledge you're adding to the body of knowledge. At the end of the day, when you're selling your product out there, this protection will seem insignificant in terms of the profit that you're likely to get. So sometimes there is that whole, that whole, how would I put it, cost versus benefit that you need to consider, but the fees are not exorbitantly large. But I think we have faced a problem in the past of uh, people coming to our offices and they end at the ground floor where they're intercepted by the middlemen who will tell you to get a patent, you need to pay me 5 million. And then at that point, you will say URSD is expensive. But our fees don't usually exceed 500,000 for the full process for the IP rights. Then uh, how do we protect research proposals? Inherently, when you make your proposal, your research proposal, you're presenting to the university committee, research committee most times. And these committees are often bound by confidentiality. So your information is confidential until it's finally published. Between the time you present your thing, you get your results and you're sure you have your proof of concept. Before it goes to that final publication where it's in the public domain, you should seek intellectual property protection or at least try to secure a filing date because at any point when we are evaluating the novelty of intellectual property, we consider the date you filed in respect of what was disclosed before that date. If you're able to file before you publish, your publication will not affect. We will not consider that you filed when the information was in the public domain. So it's always important that as and when you intend to have your publication put out there, first extract this information that you want to protect and have it filed. At least filed, even if it's not yet registered, but you have a filing date, you have a form of protection from it being in the public domain. Uh, I don't know if I've answered that properly. Maybe my colleagues could add on to that. Thank you. I, I believe that is uh, exhaustive uh, as far as those questions uh, are concerned. And uh, uh, what I'm getting is the, the need for all of us to acquaint ourselves with our IP processes so, so that we debunk the notion of it's expensive, it's not manageable, it's not affordable. At the end of the day, we do appreciate that what we seek to protect after all is worth, worth more than the monies involved. So I think the knowledge we are getting this morning is very, very useful to enlighten us on how doable these things are, the important role by URSB and how we can all benefit from these uh, key services offered by URSB so that we, we don't we get out of the comfort zones, fail to innovate, fear to write, for fear to be stolen. We need to have some kind of a, a paradigm shift in how we think about intellectual property, uh, copyrights, and all related rights. I'll then allow uh, Roy Ruta. Uh, Dr. Rangabo, is it you? Please go on. Yes, I'm on. Thank you. Am I getting through? Oh, yes. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you, Marcy and team, for this elaborate conversation. Apologies, I have speaking because I have been attending as I drive and some bits of information have actually been flowing out without me capturing them, but I had to attend this. A few things, one, to thank and commend the team for this important information. Most of us really don't know exactly what happens and what it takes to patent, to copyright and stuff like that. Two, maybe to recall quest for information, how many patents, how many patents do we have in Uganda, and especially industrial patents and medical patents? Three is about copyrights for a publication by some other publisher. If I wrote a book or created a piece of art and it is published by fountain publishers, who then owns the copyright? Because self-publishing, 
or especially academic in the academic world, self-publishing is not advised. And you you write a book, you give it Oxford or Cambridge University Press, and the press publishes your book. So you you say I authored the book. Who owns the copyright and how do the two, the author and the publisher, relate? Especially in Uganda, the copyright copyright laws and and other rules. Finally, if I wanted to trademark certain things or certain names or certain phrases, but then uh, some of these names and phrases are or known phrases or names of existing features, national features. I normally see a trademark on, on something like Gwenzori, Gwenzori water. Is it allowed in law to trademark some of those features so that you can say, I trademark Kampara and it becomes a trademark when it's actually a name for a feature? As well, uh, why, why do these things happen and what are the provisions of our rules regarding this? Finally, perhaps if there is a write-up about copyright-related information in detail in Uganda and the opportunities and challenges to expect and how Ugandans may benefit from it, I think URSP should saturate it through NIMRA on its website and other fora so that Ugandans can know that if I have sung a song, I can copyright it and protect it and because I believe there are many potential IP products in Uganda by ordinary Ugandans, but because of lack of information, we are not able to make these things up and eventually we are not able to market them, people steal them and go and make billions out of it. So the more of this information we get, the better, and I think this is a good start. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, about the statistics, uh, if I may say that uh, a URSP has a database of all registrations, uh, starting with uh, businesses, uh, which uh, include business names and companies. We have a register of approximately 800,000 uh, businesses registered in Uganda. Uh, for the trademarks, we have uh, about uh, 65,000 registered. Uh, for patents with the application, applications and grants, we have around uh, 350. Uh, for utility models, around uh, the same. Uh, utility models are around uh, 110 when you combine the applications and uh, our registrations. Uh, for copyright, we have uh, over 1,000 uh, applications and registrations. Uh, for tr uh, trademarks already mentioned. So basically we have all the uh, statistics and the categories of uh, how uh, these uh, statistics are distributed. If you want to know in the medical field, in all fields, we can always get uh, all the metadata that you need. Um, uh, the other is, uh, uh, the industrial designs actually, the industrial designs are the most uh, are common when you get the applications plus registrations, we have around uh, 500. Um, the question on uh, trademarking, uh, Renzori and all elements, I'll ask my colleague Maria Nyangoma, I saw in this call, give us one minute to respond to that. Then about the write-up, we have all write-ups. We write so much, we write a lot. We write in the electronic media, the print media, on our website, when you go on our website, we have all these write-ups simplified write-ups. We have small booklets on all the procedures, all categories of intellectual property and more. So, but we can share with the name, uh, I can always share on our WhatsApp group or on the email, uh, this information. Uh, Maria, do you have uh, anything to say about, uh, that is your docket? Thank you, Marcy. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nyankoma Maria. I'm the acting manager trademarks and geographical indications. In relation to the question of uh, trademarking uh, geographical names, the act um, says that a geographical name cannot be used as a trademark. However, we noticed that in the past we have granted, uh, we've granted uh, names like Renzori, like the examples you've given. However, what we, what um, all those that are on the register, yes, they're already registered, and that I guess that is that. However, um, we have the Geographical Indications Act, 
that actually provides for protecting geographical names. These are normally signs or products that come from a, a, a particular region and those products are attributable to the qualities or characteristic. I'll give you an example of maybe coffee that is produced maybe in the Renzori region. So those are geographical, those are products that come from a region and they'll have that, uh, they'll be, it, those products will be known to be coming from that particular locality or area. Um, another example can be the potatoes from Kabale. Those are potential geographical indications. And when they go through the steps and they become, um, geographical indications and are protected, then they will, those potatoes will be referred to potatoes from that region. So when it comes to um, trademarking, the act actually talks about um, it that the, um, a geographical name should not be protected as what? As a trademark. However, there are instances where we've done that, uh, that is bottled water actually gotten from that uh, region. I don't know if I've answered the question. I could supplement. Thank you, Maria. Um, mm -hmm. We need also to appreciate the history of uh, uh, intellectual property in Uganda. When you look at uh, databases, uh, the first trademark in Uganda was registered uh, in around uh, 1913. And uh, here in Uganda, we celebrate uh, over 100 years of uh, intellectual property. And uh, the laws have changed over time. We keep changing, reviewing, reforming, revising all these laws. And there's what I call the first timers, uh, the first in place, like for the product, Renzori was the first bottled mineral water in Uganda. And at that time, the laws were not as stringent and even the Geographic Indications Act of 2013 was not in place. And so some of these uh, that were registered under that system are protected and they're already on the register. But we are also enhanced by the geographic indications law that uh, Maria has talked about, that uh, provides for protection of uh, products uh, or goods that are attributed to a certain locality. This may be artistic uh, goods uh, or the agricultural uh, products that are attributed to the climate, the environment, the soils of uh, that uh, locality. And so most of those are named uh, 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 geographically because they are geographic indications. You can say Mukono Vanilla, Uganda Sesame, Uganda Coffee, Uganda Cotton. So it is the origin that uh, determines its uh, registration, but also gives it uh, that uh, 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 leverage to uh, get protection uh, under the different systems. So uh, they are all mechanisms for protection of whatever that you have asked Mr. Ray Ruta. I thank you very much. Uh, back to you, uh, Hadija. Thank you very, very much, Masi and uh, team. You are very amazing, memorized. So proud to have had you this morning. Uh, without further ado, I want to ask Professor Katsime to quickly give a vote of thanks uh, while our facilitator plans to leave in a few minutes. Professor Katsime, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for hosting us well. Let me first introduce myself to the members, but also especially our presenter. I'm Dr. Misha Katsime, Associate Professor, Department of Governance, and, and Dean Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at Kabari University. I'm also one of the founders of NEMRA. Thank you, uh, Ms. Masi Kainobui for an enlightening and entertaining presentation on the pursuit of intellectual property rights. As NEMRA family, we appreciate having this mysterious area clarified. I say mysterious because myself and probably others we are still ignorant about the functions of URSP. For example, the revelation that it's now NILA that handles the death and birth certificates is one of the things that I didn't know. You have also enlightened us very well on how to utilize move at, movable
property. It is refreshing to, uh, you know, how to, to utilize move a property to access credit. It's refreshing to know that now I can accept movable assets such as trademarks, patents, copyrights, etc. And that all registry services can be accessed electronically by individuals, organizations, banks, microfinance institutions, licensed money lenders, and legal representatives who may act on behalf of lending institutions. You have elaborated so well on some of the research topics academics may consider for research on issues of intellectual property rights. You have also advised us to have intellectual policies at universities and also try to make intellectual property aspects cross-cutting in the academic programs and courses that we offer. I want to thank you, uh, our esteemed presenter, for inviting us to URSB to access your staff so we can get to know much more. The presence of your staff in this online presentation is a testament of your willingness to help our researchers access more URSB services. When Hadija introduced you and read your profile to us, I realized that you are a researcher. And going by your presentation skills today, you are an excellent teacher too. I would also, this is the easiest way of mentoring other young masses of this world. Thank you very much for sparing your precious time to reach the blessing. That is it. Thank you, I'm thank done. you. Thank you very much, Professor Katsime. Professor Katsime has given a vote of thanks on uh, Nimra's uh, behalf, but also the board. Uh, we have other board members on the call, but thank you so much for that uh, well uh, thought uh, vote of thanks. I can't agree more. Uh, Marcy is a wonderful- We appreciate, we appreciate the vote of thanks. We yeah, appreciate and, the vote of thanks. Thank you very thank much. You. We are thank thank you. Marcy, anything you want to say? Any parting words as you leave the call? No, um, thank you very much to all the uh, uh, participants that have tuned in this call. Uh, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to do for our country. And uh, in whatever we do, let us uh, always uh, remember to respect intellectual property and also utilize it and protect it. Our office is open to you services. Uh, feel free to call in anytime. We have a WhatsApp number of our office 0712448448. You can reach us at any time. We have um, a direct uh, uh, call line, uh, toll free line. We are on WhatsApp, we are online. You can reach us on email. And our teams, if you need any engagements, any talks, any trainings, whether physical or online, just write to us and we'll send our experts to take you through all the different aspects of um, the work we do uh, uh, as already uh, discussed. I thank you very much uh, again, and uh, we are honored uh, to be part of this family. Thank you. Thank you very much, Masi. We thank you so, so much and your team. We look forward to further collaborations with uh, URFB, as I take the opportunity to invite all the members on this call from URSB to join NIMRA as we sort out research and innovation uh, agenda in this country. Thank you. And Masi, we, we wish you a lovely weekend. You, you are free to um, attend to other matters. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Members, do you Thank want to you say hello you. now? It might be meet and greet for those who joined late, those who are not members of NIMRA, please 
feel free to contact myself and um, or Vincent. I'll include my telephone number in the chat plus email address. We are stronger together. And so you are all welcome. We can also unmute if you want to say something. As we drop off, it's exactly 11 a.m. You might switch on your videos. Thank you, Adija, for the great work. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for attending in big numbers. Bye. Have a nice weekend, all of you. God bless and keep safe. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.